Welcome in everyone to the Challenge After Show. I'm Dan, that's Jenna, and tonight we're talking the best villains in challenge history. Now we're starting off right here on the YouTube. Later on, we're gonna switch this over to Patreon. But Jenna, did you know that just for $1 a month, you can watch us and we put over four videos on there a month. So that's like 25 cents a video. How fun and how nice. Funny you ask, Dan. I did know that personally, and I contributed $1 to watch myself have a conversation that I've already had in the past. I want right. to relive things sometimes. You know, I get very nostalgic. I'm aware of that, and so is my mom. I don't know if you've heard this. I may talk about it a few times because it's traumatizing. Um, she refuses to pay a single dollar to watch us review the challenge and talk. So, I wonder if any of our internet friends and typical watchers and commenters could please, you know, be better than my mom. Yeah, well, and they also, if anyone's concerned, challenge the season 37, we're going to air all that right on the YouTube, and we're just going to have more bonus content like this on the Patreon. Oh, yeah. So, I mean, if you want to get right into it, Jen, and, and talk about the best villains in challenge history. Well, before we get right into it, I want to preface it by saying... Okay. Up until 30 seconds before Dan and I went live just now, we had some clarification that needed to be said about what we mean by villains. My understanding was a little bit different than his. So my preparation this week has been all about who's the biggest asshole, who's the biggest douche, who is cold hearted, who is mean, who is mean spirited. But then Dan kept saying before we went live, these are the best villains of all time. So I think I went a little bit of a different direction. These might not be the most um, like villain character, maybe not who we love to hate. It might not be who comes off as like, a, oh, this guy's such a good villain. It's maybe more of these people might be just not the best people. Well, but, I have, a, I have, I mean, everyone's going to have their own definition of what makes a good person, but I think we're on the, I think we're not too far off. I think we're just a couple pages apart, not a full book apart. So I think that we're going to be just fine because I have people on here that I don't like, but other people that I think I, I do like them because they're so villainous. So it's interesting. Sound good? Yeah. And I didn't mean to phrase like that because we're all flawed. And I know that a lot of people have come around and, and come full circle, but let's just say they haven't had the most shining moments on the TV show. Like we can, you know, everybody makes mistakes and everybody can be forgivable. So let me say that. Um, these are just people that maybe didn't come off as a villain character, but maybe just were mean spirited to other people along the way. But I think it hits all fronts. So I'm very intrigued onto what you said, because I also intentionally tried really hard not to go for the, the gimmies, okay. not to go for the ones that everybody's going to think of. I think we'll see. It's also, it's also your opinion. So if you if the gimmies are who you think are the best villains, then they're the best villains. You can't help that. So. Right. Well, don't worry. Uh, in Jenna fashion, I have uh, ex an extensive slew of honorable mentions to go through. So. As, as do I. So the way this will work is we'll do our top four, five, four, three, two, and then we'll do our honorable mentions and then we'll do our final one. Yes. So easy enough. And, gonna, and you can start too. It was very hard to arrange the rankings and right. very hard to narrow it down up until right before we went live i was switching people had to cut people from the list move people around so it's still i mean it's a, it's a bit all over the place but i think i narrowed in on on what i think is my best version of the i list. love it i love it um you, <laughs> you love it. i do I, i'm i love doing these bonus uh type of clips because we didn't i mean to do the research for this is just fun to, to dull back we're not watching anything on tv like we regularly do we're just going on the internet and like looking for our villains that we used to love or, can, or still currently love because there's people on my list at least in the honorable mention section that aren't even on the show anymore so here we go all right you want me to go first or you're going first ladies first of course you're first mm -hmm. oh yes oh yes you're first. um fifth spot right so i'm going five you're going five four four okay and my fifth spot is somebody who if if you've watched our show for a long time, you know my feelings on this person. And you might be surprised that they're only in the fifth spot and not the number one spot. Who do you think this is, Dan? And then I think it's Johnny Bananas. No. Oh, okay. See, that's what I mean by car caricature of a villain. This person, I think, just might be like a real life villain. Um, and that is Zach. Oh. <laughs> for so 
many reasons that we've discussed. Um, I think that he's treated his partners in the past very shitty. Yes. Uh, especially the female mm-hmm. partners and teammates. Super um, misogy- misogynistic on the surface, I believe. Um, he treated John A like trash when they were partners on Battle of the Exes. We've seen him be... And, uh... Amanda, absolutely. We see him just being like so frustrating to watch in his relationship with Jenna. I think frustrating is the best word because I love Jenna and therefore that's why he's in my fifth spot because he must have some redeemable qualities. But for the most part, it just doesn't seem like he's gaslights her on the regular from what we've seen on yeah. the episode manipulates every situation so she's the one in the wrong meanwhile it's his fault for there being a fight or an argument he's always right it's zach's world i mean he just seems like nobody that i want to hang out with so that's why he's my number five villain i don't think that's a bad spot for him to be in because i think you also have to take into consideration being a good villain on the show being like a strategic villain where you're just like playing the game almost in a dark and mean way and he doesn't i'm not sure he has that type of quality in him to do it that way where he's just mean to people on the show so i think he's it's a good spot for him as a villain i think he's mean to people on the show um and also can (laughs) maybe this doesn't make him a villain but competitive wise he seems to be a lot of brawn but doesn't necessarily always back it up we've seen struggle immensely in several challenges endurance or losing in a sledgehammer elimination to uh, jordan a competitor with one arm so we've seen him kind of like puff out his chest a little bit that a little bit but then not always back it up so i don't know if that makes you a villain but he just seems like Look, it's your list and people can comment all they want in the comment section that's fine too it's great mm-hmm. um in my five in my five spot i'm going with a female villain any Seth- guess Sexist. Just <laughs> uh, I have majority are men on my list, but yes, there is. Uh, All men are villains, Dan. Every oh. man on earth is a villain. So why would I even put a female on this list? I'm not sure then. Uh, my first female villain, because there's going to be two of them, is Laurel. If you remember Laurel, Laurel oh. had yes. I, 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 mean, about her. I just mean if you remember what she did that was so villainous. Can you give me? Do you have any? Do you, do you remember what she did on the show that was so villainous over the years? Yeah, Laurel has been a very, talk about mean-spirited. So it's really weird, my perception of Laurel, because I like to think of her as a badass female competitor. No one can step to Laurel. Laurel is awesome, and she's going to bring her A-game every time. But every time I I rewatch a season, I'm like, damn, she was just mean. She She was an asshole to everyone for no reason. And her, well, she had reasons, but they were just, I don't even know if there were reasons. They were just like, she she would make fun of Big Easy's weight back in the day. She made, remember Paula, she like made fun of her having like an eating disorder or like made fun of her for thinking that she had one or maybe she did, who knows, but you still, that's not something that you do. And then the most recent one, well, there's two recent ones, but one of the recent ones, her and um, Cara Maria for that whole season, she treated her like just trash. Not that I'm a huge Cara Maria fan, but no one deserves to be treated that poorly by somebody else and um what was the most recent one where she didn't stab the right part of the they so climbed up that it. tower yeah she started sucking it to <laughs> what bad sportsmanship was that that was insane how mean and villainous she was there i don't who the hell was she going against too that was so it recent. was against ninja it was against ninja natalie because I remember Ninja was smart enough to say, that doesn't look right. I don't think she followed this as precisely as you're yeah. supposed to. Because it's something a lot of competitors wouldn't have caught because you're in the heat of the moment. You have to really like intricately look at someone. It was trees. They had to yeah, like caught, nail yeah. posts in a tree or something like that. And she skipped one of the holes that she was supposed to nail it in. Yeah, yeah. Something yeah. like that, and yeah. Then, and she's also villainous in the way that she plays the game too. And I think that's going to be a part of being a best villain is she was always trying to sneak behind people's back and backstab people and, and do things of that nature. Nowadays, they all are doing it, but some are doing it more so than others. And I think that she's one of those ones that will try to play a villainous game. So I think that's why she's also on my list at the number five spot. Yeah, no, I think that that's a great choice. And there was another example that pops in my head from Laurel. Um, gosh, I can't remember the season right now. The, the season is escaping me, but they split into teams. Go, uh, cutthroat. Cutthroat, yeah. Cutthroat. And she was so mean to 
Savan or Savan. Yeah, Savan is her name. The one that ended up hooking up with CT that one time on Duel 2. And that's yeah. the one that DM found out about. I think Savan is her name. I can't remember. Or Siobhan. Um, Siobhan. And she was just so mean to her out of the blue. That's why it's so weird about Laurel. She just seems to pick at people and poke at them for no other reason than her being bigger and badder. So that's why I think she's a villain. Um, she just like unpromptedly wanted to wrestle Savion so badly and was just like digging at anything she could to try to piss her off. And it just was like such a power trip move and very, very villainous. Yes. Uh, give me, what's your number four? I'd love to hear the number four. My number four is Jordan. And I think Jordan actually is, if you're going to say like best villains, it's not necessarily that I think Jordan is a, a bad or ill in tended person I actually think he's a a villain character so he yeah. falls perfectly into this ranking I think um a lot of fans and a lot of people on the show seem to not like him uh because of him being like arrogant or cocky yeah. and no one really likes a cocky person right he's very confident in his uh, athletic ability um thinks he's very smart like just thinks he's good at everything which I mean he pretty much backs it up but that's kind of a villainous trait um, and he, he plays the game in a way where, I mean, the thing that he did against Johnny Bananas when he, um, picked up all the skulls, not that that's being a villain, but if you're a Johnny Bananas lover, cause you think Bananas is king, then you're going to think Jordan is then like the Joker to Johnny Bananas Batman. You know what I mean? So and it's funny you say that. So the reason Jordan didn't make my list because he is villainous in all those ways you said is. I don't like Johnny Bananas. So when he flipped over all those things, I was like, he's a hero. Like, it's weird, right. I know. But it's just yeah. how you perceive the show. There's no, I mean, I completely agree. He's done a ton of villainous things. Um, but he also had that thing with Tori, which made me think of a hero too, because he has like this, this big love thing and like the wedding bells, even though none of that happened, but that's besides the point. So yes, Jordan, to me, didn't make my list, but I totally agree with what you said. He's definitely a villain in some ways, for sure. Yeah, and a lot of people just see him as an asshole. So I agree too. It's not that I particularly like, personally dislike him, but I think he's a villain character. Right, right. Um, okay, my number four spot, I went with someone I mentioned last week, and that's Devin. I think um, <laughs> even if you go uh, back, well, uh, just, all right, go ahead. even if you go back to his time on uh, Are You the One, he was super mean to the girl, one of the girls on that show. I'll I know Pam mentioned her name and I forgot it again, but he's been villainous even from day one on his MTV debut, which is Are You The One? And he's obviously carried that forward through the challenge. And, uh, but you tell me what, why you, do you think he's not a villain or what do you think? No, I think you're right. I consider him. I think he is the perfect quote unquote villain because he plays that role, but it's very clear to me that he wants to play that role. Hey. That's my only point is like, is, does he execute it well enough where we can actually call him a villain? Or is he just someone who wants to be the villain and knows that that's his place? You know what I mean? Hey, if you want to be a villain and you back it up, you're still going to jail, right? If you're a criminal, you're a villain, whatever you want to call it. Like, you, you know, he wants to do the time. He's going to do the crime, whatever you want to say. I think he's a villain. I do. I think, I don't know if in real life he's this mean to everybody. I don't think so. He's doing it for the show, but he is entertaining me as a villain, not a hero. So I, I put him in for best villain because he's entertaining so much to me personally. So no, you're right. He definitely is a villain uh, because he pokes. If we're talking about poking people's buttons and instigating things, he's always the first one on the front lines of a drama fight. Like he's there to stir yeah. the pot. He's there to spread gossip and just piss you off basically. But it's funny again, because it all comes down to perception. He's definitely more a villain than a hero, but there were like heroic moments that Devin had in my mind. Like I remembered when um, he was on the season exit or rivals three, when banana stole the money from Sarah and Devin and Cheyenne somehow made their asses to a final on their first season. And I loved them so much together. And Devin really hopped on to the, the side of Sarah's defense when banana stole the money and was like really in her corner and really vocal about it. And I remember being like, hell yeah, Devin, like, thank you. What Everything you're saying is so correct and articulate. So I really appreciated him for that. So in some moments he can also be like the well, nice guy. And same with, well, I mean, I, and I loved when he challenged bananas to the, the button pushing game. I love that type. So he became a hero for two seconds, but he was such a jerk to bananas about it 
mm-hmm. versus Jordan when he did Jordan pushed the things down and just went against bananas. Devin goes against bananas and 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 talk shit the whole time. So he's such a he to me he's a villain because he doesn't care. That's funny about that elimination because I'm wondering if we can make a different ranking theme: best eliminations and worst eliminations. And I mean, like that could be your perception. That could be most exciting to watch. That could be the best game or the worst game. That light challenge has to be one of the worst games. No, it's not a good game, but the setup was so good. Elimination. You're right, Jenna. It's not a great game, but the set you can play that game at like Chuck E. Cheese or at a golf place, like in the arcade. But right. the setup for it was so good, which is why I, it's just because I don't. It's just because I love when Bananas gets the gets the you know gets whipped by other people on the show. I like when he gets beat up a little bit. Um, okay, it's it's number three. Your your number your number three. Yes, your number three. My number three is somebody you already said. I ranked Laurel even higher than you. Wow. Laurel is my number three for all of the reasons already discussed. She I love that. is a super, super villain of the challenge. I think it's great that we uh, that we have a, one, already someone in common. So, but this is good because I think we have some diversity here too. Uh, my number three is my favorite challenger of all time, and that is Wes. <laughs> Wes is correct. He's the perfect villain to go against another villain and that is Johnny Bananas. And growing up, I feel like you either wanted West to win or Bananas. I felt like it was pick a side. Nowadays, maybe not so much because the lines have been blurred, but when the challenge from 10 years ago was going on and Wes and Bananas were on it, I feel like you picked the side. And uh, I always loved that Wes, he was my hero, but he's also an anti-hero because of the way he runs the game and he tries to be friends with everybody, but he's really lying because you can't be friends with everybody in this game. And that's a very villainous move. And there you go. I have a follow-up question for you on Wes. Sure. When did he start being your hero? He was always my, see, that's the thing about him is there's villains that you like and villains that you hate for certain reasons or, 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 or not certain reasons, you know? And he was always, I always loved West, even when he was, you know, remember uh, the Jersey Shore, obviously you do. The situation was everyone, I lo- but I loved him throughout the whole thing. And now look what he's turned into. Mm-hmm. I always love a situation because I just thought he was just, you could say he's fake all you want, but he played a character that I love to watch. And even though it's the mm-hmm. villain, sometimes you like to watch the villain. I don't know. It is what it is. Right. The only reason I bring that up is because the West has definitely had a character arc for me where I like him more now and I don't know if it's just the seniority or if he's matured but I always thought you know what Wes was just bold he was just like a a really big personality because I remembered Wes from the duel when he was screaming everybody when he went into elimination and was just really energetic uh fiery with, but I but I still remember him like being an asshole. But in that capacity, I was like, oh, well, he's not that bad. But then I was re-watching Fresh Meat when he was on with whoever he was with at that time. Joanna? Joanna? Jo- jo- uh, Johanna was uh, from, they, they met on the real world Austin together and they dated for quite some time. Yeah. And Dan, this, this boy, Wes, was the biggest douche okay. that it was embarrassing because yep. he was not a character he was authentically a douche and if i went back in time and that's why he's on the villain list for me but if i went back in time what how old was i when i was watching Wes at that time 18, <laughs> 17 so yeah. a fellow douche was with watching him and i loved it so it's a it's a weird thing yeah, yeah. I, don't, I don't know what else to say about it i guess uh I just, I think that strategically the way he plays the game makes him very villainous, even to this day. Yeah, so I know Wes was super young at that time. And if I had a a camera following me around at 18 to last year, then I would be probably a huge douche as well. So who knows how I'd be perceived on camera. So, but what I mean is looking back, it's like, it's hard not to have douche on his forehead. Like it's like secondhand embarrassment douchey. Um, But yeah, I mean- I like him now. So everyone changes and grows. Um, So that was number three. So my number two actually is Kenny. So choosing Kenny was a very personal choice for me because I know that 
I think most people love him. I know he was dubbed like, like Mr. Beautiful or Mr. Wonderful, whatever it was. He's very attractive. I think he had a good chemistry with most of the women in the house. A lot of the guys seemed to like him. He was in with like the Johnny Bananas Evans, like the cool crew of athletic ringleader guys. And I think most of the fans liked him for the most part. I know he carried Wes up the hill once. So there's definitely parts of him where he was a good character, but to me, he's just a total villain through and through. I think that he just is pretty cocky and he played up the whole, he could have been playing up a character, but he played up like the whole, oh, I'm used to my, my mom doing everything for me. And it's, I, I, I just smile because I have such a pretty face and he was so, what killed me the most was such an asshole and a dick he was to Tanya that we can see on the show right and in addition to the allegations like there are the allegations that are off the show and i i know that we she reached a settlement and we never really it never went to like trial really so we never really have the evidence or can see what truly happened um but i think that the fact that him and evan were no longer asked to be back to the show is pretty telling so i think in that capacity is also a crazy super villain um, but again, I don't want to tarnish his reputation too much with it being it, with the possibility that it could be a false accusation, I'm not saying that I believe it's false. I don't know. But um, I think even just the way that he acted towards Tanya in general was just so rude. He was such an asshole, such a dick to her. It was so unwarranted. And for that reason, I just he's a villain in my eyes. Uh, ditto from me. He didn't make my list, but um yeah, I don't even, yeah, it's, it's hard to even want to acknowledge him after the off-camera stuff that went down. It's like, if, if that really happened, then he is a villain, but is he the best villain? And I'm like, I can't, I don't even want to put him on my list for that reason. Um, I don't even want to. Yeah, well, that's what, when, his was the, his name was the one that stuck out to the most when you started saying the best villain, the best villain. I'm like, oh shit, my first two, my number one and number two maybe more than villains like they're actually just people who did something very very wrong like bad people villains not necessarily tv character villains so for that reason like shit it's just getting a little bit maybe it's your list it's it's your list and people are gonna have plenty to comment on so that's it's it's fine it's good um all right i think just like going back in time he he just seems like again a douchebag as well Yeah. Where I think at the time people liked him and they were like, oh, he's so attractive and he's so cool. But looking back, it's like, no, he was a mega douche. He's not as cool as we once gave him credit for. I guess the only thing I will say is like, Fessy's not making my list because I think he's like an awful person trying to be a villain when I don't think he's good at it or whatever. So that's, I guess, what you, mean? you know what I mean? Um, all right. My number two is Cara Maria. <laughs> nice. Nice because choice. If you remember when she started out, she definitely was not a villain. She was a rookie trying to prove herself and actually getting shit on quite a bit. And I loved that car, Maria. But now I think later on in her life, especially teaming up with Polly and stuff, I don't know. There's something about her. I just do not like her. And I consider her a villain. And hey, but I put her at number two on my list. So you go, Cara, at number two on my list. Yep. She has the, I think... You know what is funny? I said to my fiance as I was preparing for this, he started naming uh, a lot of like women as potential villains. And I was like, are they villains or have they been villainized? Oh, here. Yeah. You know, <laughs> Oprah had this saying that was like, are you silent or were you silenced? And he was laughing because right. he thought I was just being like crazy feminist. But I think Cara is one of those types where it's like, is she truly a villain or did they just like paint that? picture of her i know what you're saying because i thought about it too so they, i'm like she definitely has villain characteristics but at the painted, same time they, it's they, they the producers painted her in a certain light and i bought the painting so she's on my list <laughs> <laughs> well said i like it i like it uh my first one my number hold one on, hold on. let's do um let's do all honorable. of our uh, honorable mentions okay so just list them just list them Okay, I have Vinny. Um, I don't know if you remember him, but he Bananas was- Bananas cousin? Man. No, no, the, the 
the other Vinny that took off Mandy's bra at the bar, like, or like lifted up her shirt. He literally just walked right over to her, lifted up her shirt at the bar, didn't apologize for it, and no remorse to Mandy nor his partner, Sarah, because Sarah also got kicked out. That was Battle of the Exes. He did not give a flying fuck. He thought he was so entitled and so validated for what he did. Um, Jen, Jen was just ready to fight anyone and everyone. Like she was the, the pop-off queen for kind of no reason. So she was kind of like a, a bitch. Yeah. Um, Shane, Shane is a villain because one time he said he was never going to watch our after show again. So for that <laughs> reason, fuck you, Shane, he's a villain. Um, Beth is the villain character, right? Right. Um, all the girls, for some reason, on the duel didn't like her. We've seen her villainous past. Although, I, I mean, I have mixed feelings on I have mixed feelings, her. too, because I didn't put Beth on my list because I thought that that season that all the girls went against her because they thought she was the villain, she actually became the anti-villain because everyone was shitting on her. Like when Laurel shit on Cara Maria, how can you be a villain if everyone's mean to you and you're getting picked on the whole time? It was weird, but yes, Beth is was a, traditionally a villain, you're right. Well, that's why my point of, that's the exact one my fiance says, Beth. And I was like, is she a villain or was she villainized? Because I feel like Beth was villainized and she's not a villain. Anyway, bananas. He, but he's only an honorable mention. Wes, but he's only an honorable mention. And old CT. Yes. So it's funny you say that. I'll start off with CT is on my honorable mention because he's not a villain to me anymore. But when he first went on to that real world and like got in a fight with Adam and he was just so mean to everybody until he kind of showed us his softer side with Diem. And I'm sorry, but you mm -hmm. cannot be a villain anymore. He was so <laughs> good the rest of his time. But yes, yeah, CT was the like one of the OG villains, but he's just, he can't make my top five because he's he's an honorable mention at this point. Camilla is an honorable mention for me. That chick's throwing chairs. She's, you're going to die. She's screaming that out as I recall. Um, Abe, Cara Maria's ex. Abe is totally on my list. Um, and those Why are my others, but those are the ones I want to, I just wanted to mention real quick. Why is Abe a villain? Oh, Abe was Abe was a great villain when he first. He was just a jerk to everybody. He was no whole bars. I'm good. Like remember in eliminations, he was like, "I'm going to destroy you. I'm going to like kill you." He was, he was just a very, he could turn it on. And to me, that was very villainous of him uh, throughout these early stages. And you remember right. him and really his, his relationship with Car Maria was not healthy. And in a way, people if they chose Car Maria's side would consider him a villain in that relationship too. Yeah, no, you're, you're absolutely right. I did actually have that thought now that I'm rethinking it, but I, I don't remember the, the specifics of what happened between them. But yeah. yeah, I think you're right with him having that, that villainous role because of how fiery he is and what he does in eliminations. But again, we, we have like a, a different, it's funny, we have such a different perception of the word villain because I have to keep thinking, oh yeah, like villain character, not just, that right. person <laughs> it, can be it can be both though like i have shane down as my honorable mention as well but you already mentioned him but i thought that he had villainist uh tendencies especially when he was with that mean girls group whatever the hell they were called what were they called mm -hmm. the lavender ladies there it is wasn't he he was in that group they were amanda's an example too amanda was a mean girl she could be considered a villain right i mean in a way so there you go she definitely can and, and then Beth, my number too, one. Beth is an interesting character. But anyways, you're number one. Sorry, you're number one. And number one, you swiped her in your honorables, Camilla. Oh, Camilla. <laughs> Camilla's my number one. She's punching production assistants. She's calling people racist terms. She, yeah. And yeah. again, I. it looks like she's grown. I actually checked in on her social media the other day. So it seems like she's doing well. I, well, we can break. we can talk about that. Did you you saw the the news and gossip about Camilla? Is there new news? All I saw was that she was licking her son's face and then got a lot of backlash from fans. And she know. starts crying. So her son had like oh, like there. frosting or something on his face, and instead of just licking it once, she like licked his entire face. It was a little weird. 
And then the fans went like, if, if like your kid had something on her face and you wanted to lick it off, I guess that's one thing. But she like did like five or six licks. So she just kept licking, but like not just the spot where the stuff was, Jenna, his whole face. Mm-hmm. You can watch it. It's up on the internet somewhere. It's weird. Like a lion cleaning yes. their cub. Right? Like you, know you just lick them up and down. Every part of his face was licked by her. And then the fans <laughs> obviously went against her. Then there's a ne- the next video is her crying. Like everyone's going against me, blah blah blah. So I don't. It's a. It's interesting, but that's my yeah. latest thriller like, for that. Um, I'll She's say this. Number one villain. I'll say this, Jenna. You stole my number one villain in your honorable mentions too. Let me guess. Bananas. Bananas. Of course, he is the best <laughs> yes. villain for every reason that we've mentioned. For the reasons where you say he just can be a jerk. For the reasons that I say where he. He plays a good game where he pisses a lot of people off. He's a villain. He's the he is my number one villain of all time on the challenge. Yes. So he's not even just a villain. He is the villain, and that's why I left him off. Just because I knew. Well, for I think it should be unanimous, okay. but that's strategically why I left him off, just so that it wasn't like the clear, obvious banana show. But he is the he, villain. Like, he. He is the villain. He stole a million dollars from somebody. He has to be on that list. Like I can say Ashley's an honorable mention all day, but I don't think Mm. she stole the money from Hunter. Um, But then again, like you said, I think it's a character that she's trying to play sometimes when she wears the snake, the snake earrings. Like she didn't bring those because she likes snakes. She brought those because she wants to be the ultimate villain. But Bananas, not only stealing that money, but just the way he plays the game and the things that he says to people, he's, he can be really mean. Um, yeah. and I think that he wants to be the villain for energy. He, he, he is an entertaining villain. Unlike Fessy, Jenna, he's a very entertaining villain. How could he not be my number? He entertains me, even though I hate everything he does half the time, most of the time, a lot of the time, you know, I love it. It's great. He is an entertaining villain because he is a true villain at his rotten bananas core. And he rotten. is, a ro- he is a rotten banana. I love that. You said that he's a rotten banana. He- accepted that role yeah and has executed it to perfection yes um yeah that's uh, everything well, to- <laughs> we got through it jenna we got through our our time here talking about <laughs> best villains um we'll have to come up with another hot topic for next week we'll talk to pam about it and we'll figure something out for our next uh our next show perfect all right Jules, well, perhaps heroes heroes can, i mean you can do heroes for sure yeah but that's kind of like our favorite players and we already i know that. it's not as good as doing villains villains is a little more fun to to do i think <laughs> heroes has a lot more to be tougher to do yeah yeah all right well go to sleep apparently all right guys here's a reminder don't be like eight my o'clock mom. eight o'clock over there give us a dollar yeah give that us is. a dollar give us a dollar give us a dollar one dollar miss for a dollar well, the people that are still watching now are already on our Patreon, so there you go. Tell your friends to hook us Give up. Give us more. Dollar. Stop being so cheap. Up and up. <laughs> I love the, the doll. Let the George Washington's flow. I think it's fantastic. Um, but yeah, we'll come up with another topic for next week. Thank you all for joining us. Have a great weekend, and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>